Hey, what's up guys, it's Randy and welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to sync your Fourscore library from your iPad to your Mac computer. With the new Fourscore 12.1 update, you can actually sync your libraries from your iPad to your Mac computer. And what's awesome about this is that anything that you do on your iPad is gonna show up in your library on your Mac computer or vice versa. Something important to note is that you do have to have a Mac it has to be running Big Sur in order to get Fourscore on your Mac. And third, you also have to have the Pro membership, which is their subscription plan. It's like 13 bucks a year or something like that. And they are gonna be releasing this feature for every user. Uh, they just rolled it out to the Pro members first. So if this is something you wanna get your hands on this year, you can just upgrade for the first year. It's like 13 bucks and then you'll have access to all these features. All right, so let's go ahead and set up syncing. So what you wanna do is start on the device that has the majority of your scores. For the vast majority of us, this is probably gonna be the iPad because we've been using this on iPads forever. So I'm gonna scroll down and go to sync in the menu. And the first thing here, just click this button that says sync with iCloud and it'll pop up this menu. This is asking how it should handle any conflicts. So if you're using a library that you have uh, connected to you know, multiple devices, you want to say prefer device versions if the majority of your scores are stored on the device. You really only have to do this once and it's basically gonna set up your library that way. So I'm gonna set up the iPad to prefer the device version and I'll set up the Mac later to prefer the uh, iCloud version. So that's going ahead and you can see updating 22% there. So we'll switch over to the desktop now. So this is a brand new Fourscore. I haven't actually done anything on the desktop yet. It's all brand new as you can see here. I'll go here and go sync. And I'll go ahead and sync with iCloud. And I'm gonna prefer the iCloud versions for this because there are no actual scores on, them on the Mac yet. So I can see here on the iPad, the last sync was just a few moments ago. So it's actually all up to date. So I can go ahead and close that menu now. And that's it for the iPad. So I don't even need to use that anymore. Uh, what I'll do now is go back to the desktop and I should have scores in here theoretically if it's up to date. Yep, they're all there. What's cool about this is we can actually test this to make sure that it's properly syncing. So on this first score here, nine to five, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, throw a little annotation here. Nice little squiggle, press done. And I if I go to the first score here, so it's not there. So what you can actually do is go to the sync menu here. Um, and I think you drag this down. No, it should, oh, so it showed up. So you can see it takes about you know, 15, 20 seconds for those changes to show up. And that won't actually happen at all unless you're connected to Wi-Fi. So let's test this out here. Let's go back to this. Let's turn my iPad off Wi-Fi. And I'm gonna go ahead and add another annotation here. There's a bunch of squiggles there. I'll press done. And I'm gonna wait for that to sync. We'll give that 15 seconds or so. We'll toggle between some scores here on the desktop. Yeah, so it's not showing up. So what I'll do is go back to the iPad, connect it to Wi-Fi, and you can see once it connects to Wi-Fi, that information should populate here. Should see some squiggles showing up here in just a second. Yeah, so there they are. So it only takes about you know, 10, 15 seconds or so for that information to, to show up here. And then again, we can also do the exact same thing here if we wanna do some annotations on the desktop and we'll see that information show up on the iPad. Okay, there it is. So as you can see, it doesn't really work unless you're connected to your network. So any changes that you do on your iPad while you're out at a gig, unless you have cellular or something like that, I don't actually know if it works over cellular, I think it would. But any changes that you do at a gig, you'll have to wait till you get home for those to update to your iCloud library or until you connect to a Wi-Fi network. And then one thing too is if it's not updating, what you can do is go to the sync menu again and you can drag this down and uh, you'll see that wheel show up and it's basically automatically fetching any new data. So. So currently it allows you to sync your music library and your content. So it's basically your libraries, set lists, bookmarks, annotations, metadata, and even your recordings. What it doesn't let you sync are your settings. So if you have like half page mode on or something like that, or uh, you know the gradient effect, anything like that, those settings won't sync over. Also it doesn't do the dashboard data. So if you use the dashboard for you know learning or with students or something like that, they say that it's a privacy issue to sync that data because I think it's linked to your Apple account. So they don't sync anything like that. So just be mindful that information won't transfer over. This is actually a pretty significant update to Fourscore. I've been using Fourscore for about seven or eight years now and it's 
exclusively been on the iPad the entire time. And they actually released the desktop version earlier this year, but if you guys saw my last video about this, it was actually kind of pointless because they were two separate libraries. So yes, you could work on Fourscore on your desktop, which is kind of cool, but that information wouldn't transfer back to your iPad. So it was really kind of pointless. You'd still have to like physically export each score and airdrop them to your iPad or however you choose to do that. So they were really two different things and you couldn't really think of them as this, you know, merged sort of ecosystem. But now this is one Fourscore account. So like I can actually use the desktop when I want to do large format edits. I think of things like, you know, if I want to add a blank page with extra lyrics, if you do want the pro membership, you go up to the menu up here, go down to settings and you can see Fourscore Pro right here. Uh, so you can manage your subscription and there's also some other features that come along with the pro membership. Um, or of course you can always wait till it comes out for all devices. Well guys, that's it for this video. I hope that this video was helpful for you. And if it was, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe down below. We're actually coming up on a thousand subscribers, which is absolutely crazy. And I do plan on posting more content just like this. Hope you're having a great day. We'll see you guys in the next one.